Welcome to CivilNet. Today we're going to talk about the protests in Turkey which started in Taksim Square in Istanbul and then reached all over Turkey in more, more than 60 provinces in Turkey. Our guest today is the Human Rights Watch senior researcher in Turkey, Emma Sinclair Webb. Emma, welcome to CivilNet. Thank you. Uh, Emma, uh, in Taksim Square there are similar protests uh, almost every day and they go violent quite often and especially in May Day. What does make this one so different? Well, this protest has now gone on uh, for a week um, and it, it began a week ago when uh, campaigners against the uh, transformation of the, the park and square into a huge shopping center uh, staged a protest um, where they tried to stop bulldozers uh, dismantling uh, part of the park at the back of the park um, and they, they literally physically prevented it by staging a sit-in uh, and this is now a week ago and then that sit-in grew uh, and more people came and joined in um, and then the police cracked down on the 29th of May and, on, and again on the 30th of May very, very heavily against these peaceful demonstrators. Uh, so they transformed uh, this sit-in uh, into a growing demonstration both in Taksim and then uh, in many other cities throughout Turkey. Uh, Emma, uh, there, there were reconstructions in Taksim Square for almost more than a year. Well, why is it happening now? Well, there's been a, a growing campaign against uh, the way in which the Prime Minister in particular and the government have decided on Taksim Square as a place that needs urban regeneration, uh, as they call it. Uh, and there's been no public consultation process on this urban regeneration. Indeed, it's uh, gone ahead just on the order of the government um, and the plan is to rebuild a building that was there a hundred years ago, uh, which was an old barracks uh, in the Ottoman period, uh, and to rebuild an imitation of this barracks, but as a shopping centre. Uh, and now this is a pet project of the Prime Minister's. And I think what people were really aggrieved by, um, the people who got involved in this campaign, is that how could someone, how could our Prime Minister decide for us people of Istanbul without any consultation, uh, that this we should have a shopping centre in our Taksim. And uh, Taksim is a very symbolic place for a lot of people. Um, it's had a long history of association with demonstrations uh, and with the left. And always the May Day demonstrations took place in Taksim and there were some very striking uh, and terrible incidents in the past, uh, particularly in May the 1st, 1977, when uh, many people died in the May the 1st demonstrations. After that, Taksim became enshrined as a sort of memorial site, plus a site of uh, popular resistance uh, in the mind of leftists. So May the 1st always became a kind of associated with Taksim. And I think that's one of the reasons why Taksim carries the symbolism it does, and, and why, therefore, a redevelopment of this place into something quite other, um, uh, with the risk also that it would never be a site of demonstration again or of popular protest, uh, was for many people a very daunting idea and it was something they very much opposed. Um, but the point is that this demonstration we're seeing today started as a protest about for, from among environmentalists, among people who wanted to keep taxing as it is or not change it the way the Prime Minister wanted. And it got transformed, this demonstration, into a great wide anti-government protests uh, in, in which the participants now have many different aims and many different uh, political perspectives probably. So uh, it, the original start of the demonstration one week ago is different from where we're at now, uh, six, seven days, seven days into it. So, uh, so this is not uh, all this what going on, what's going on in Turkey, this is not over a park or the historical barracks? No, absolutely. Um, the park and the historical barracks have become a symbol of discontent. Uh, plans, to, plans to develop the park have become a symbol of discontent more broadly with government policies, uh, with the very top-down, uh, slightly authoritarian tendency of imposing and knowing best 
uh, what what how t- Turkey should be, which is a, a very old tradition in Turkey, actually. Uh, the generation of protesters that we see are really, yes, they're resisting, they're standing up against the government, but actually they're standing up against a form of governance uh, which they now find intolerable, being told from the top how to live, how to think, how they should speak, how they shouldn't speak. And, and that's what it's about as well. It's about resisting uh, a certain form of governance. Uh, Emma, why do you think that the police reaction was at this level? Um, I think, you know, look, I mean, basically demonstrations in Turkey have always been, uh, there's a history of very violent demonstration, very, very violent policing of demonstrations. So this is by no means the first. Um, uh, we've seen it uh, repeated across the country against students, against Kurds, against trade unionists. And we've commented as a human rights organization, we've commented for many years on the problem of bad policing um, and excessive use of force. Um, you know, in 2006 in Diyarbakir, 10 people were shot dead by the police in three days of demonstration. Um, so far, this demonstration hasn't caused, it's caused, we think, one death so far. Um, but, no, you know, considering how long it's gone on and how many people involved, you know, at least there have been, you know, that's been a limited part of it, uh, the demonstration. Um, police violence is a really great problem in Turkey and there's a big problem too that police don't get brought to justice, they don't get put on trial, they don't get investigated for the kind of abuses they commit in these demonstrations. And very, very limited tradition of really holding account, holding authorities to account. That's one of the problems. So, um, for me, violent demonstration, violent is not uh, a new phenomenon at all. But I think what we've seen in Taksim, especially, is the overwhelming use of tear gas against these peaceful protesters, which, you know, it took, it became a very striking visual image that triggered the widespread discontent that uh, some groups in Turkey feel. Uh, Emma, on that note, uh, we would like to thank you. Uh, we will continue covering the events in Turkey. Uh, and we've done live coverage of the uh, protests in Istanbul in the past days and we will do it again. And we will uh, talk more about this on CivilNet. Uh, thank you for following CivilNet. Mm-hmm.